Today, I want to show you guys one or two tricks that toys never do. And we'll be doing that looking at this incredible graffiti artist. I gotta be honest, this is probably like my favorite series to go ahead and do for you guys just because I really get to like share my enjoyment and my, and my enthusiasm about graffiti with you guys while, while going ahead and doing what I love most, and that is teaching. Look at this piece right here. So if you're new to graffiti and you can't quite read this but you still want to follow along, let me go ahead and point out the letters for you. You have a lowercase a right here, followed by his S, his M, O, and an uppercase E right around here. Now, the one thing I really love about this piece, the one thing I really enjoy about it is the fact that it has no color at all. It's just black and white. And the reason that I'm a fan of this so much is because when you do something like this, it forces you to make sure the letters look dope. All too often, new graffiti artists rely really heavily on their fill-ins to carry their piece. A little bit of a, of a fun random story. As a kid, I remember my brother and I were sketching in our black books and this dude legit, he said, he was like, yo, your piece sucks and you gotta learn letter structure. And my response, you wanna know what my response was? I told him, no, 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 man, you got it all wrong. I don't need my letters to be dope. I can just have a really sick villain. I kid you not, probably one of the stupidest things I've ever said in my life. I could not be more wrong. While it's certainly good in order to learn and study and understand color theory and kind of get used to utilizing that in your pieces, it's also a really good idea from time to time, especially for newer graffiti artists, to do completely black and white pieces. This way you focus solely on your letter structure and you make sure that nothing else is carrying your letters. Another big thing about about graffiti is contrast. Contrast pretty much is the centerpiece of pieces, right? If your piece doesn't really have any contrast, then it doesn't really pop. And that's really what a lot of graffiti artists are looking to do. They're looking to make their graffiti jump off the wall or the page if they're doing it in the books. You see, he's got not only a black outline, but he's also got drop shadow, which is also black, and then black exterior detail with a black background. That's four different elements of his piece that are all pretty much the same color with almost no contrast at all. So the question becomes, how does he separate these different things? Well, if you don't know what exterior details are, I'll catch you up to speed. Exterior details are anything that's outside of the actual letters themselves, excluding things like 3D and drop shadow. So here we have this little bit of a shape over here, and you see this throughout the entire piece. He then goes ahead and adds an extremely thick, emboldened gray outline around the drop shadow itself. We can see that right around here, and that outlines the drop shadow, once again separating it from the actual exterior detail right over here. Now, yes, it's true. The drop shadow has pretty much no contrast with the actual exterior detail, and the exterior detail, once again, has very limited contrast with the actual background itself. But I think this actually works in his favor, because once again, it keeps the focus on the letter itself. If you were to have all this crazy contrast with the drop shadow and the exterior details, it's very possible it would have overweighed the actual letters themselves and it would have ended up being the focal point. Now check out this piece right here. This is the total opposite of what we just looked at. Look at how much color this has. This is, this is, I'm gonna be honest, I just wanted to show you guys this because of how dope it is. Like the colors, the 3D, everything about this is dope. That's, that's really all I wanted to show you guys with this one. Forgive me, sometimes I like to fanboy out a little bit. But let's, let, let's go ahead and check out this piece right here because this shows us a technique that we don't really see toys do all that much and it's something I think can really help you guys out. So oftentimes someone will send me a critique and, and they're like, dude, I don't know what, what, what's wrong with my letters. I, the letter structure is just a little bit destroyed and I, don't, I can't figure out why. Oftentimes the issue is that you're not contrasting the actual letter structure. You have a lot of details going on, a lot of extensions, a lot of distortions happening, but you're not contrasting anything and that leaves things to get a little bit muddied up. It leaves the viewer a little bit clueless and unable to read the actual piece itself, even if the letters are still simplified and not really all that crazy or wild style. So check out what he does here. He has the top portion of his A right here. He's got the back portion of it, and then he's got the actual center piece of it, right? But he goes ahead and differentiates the back part from the top and the middle by using color. The color is used in order to contrast in this specific instance. Now you can use value, you can use a bunch of different things to go ahead and contrast. You don't have to use color. But color is a really effective way in order to go ahead and contrast certain things. So let's just say, for example, once again, this is just an example, but let's say I had the letter R. Nothing crazy, just a basic print font R. Let's say a different letter had an extension that kind of came like this, very similar to this that he has here. Well, now that's a B. That, that's definitively a B. There's nothing else that could possibly be other than a B. So what you might end up doing is you might actually want to go ahead and color this a different color in order to help contrast the actual R 
from the extension itself. Once again, while this is just an example, this is something that we can actually see being used by him throughout this piece here, where you have this part of the M, and then you have an extension that goes right behind it that's a totally different color. Same thing here with the E, where you have an extension that goes behind it that's a totally different color. And same thing here with, once again, the E itself, where the back of the E is this nice, beautiful yellow and orange, while the bottom of the E, it's not an extension, it's still letter structure, but it's more of a purple color, and it shoots on down, where once again, he decides to add another piece of the letter E and make that into a different color. Once again, while this is all still letter structure, he still is using contrast in order to differentiate different parts of the letter. So it's a different application of the same technique. Another really important thing is to combine this with erasing certain parts of certain lines. While obviously you don't have to erase the entire thing because we can see right here this is fully outlined, if we look here on the A, you'll notice the line comes here and then stops. He doesn't continue the outline here. So instead of differentiating these two areas with an outline, you can go ahead and get rid of that outline and differentiate it with color instead. But that's on a single letter, a single letter where those two different boxes would typically be connected. So say you wanted to do this for two different letters that aren't actually connected. We can actually simulate this here on this piece. All we have to do is just get rid of that little bit of an outline right there. And then from here, let's just pretend that this M is actually purple and you can still differentiate it with color. Forgive the sloppy fill in here. We're just trying to do this for demonstration purposes, but you can see right there, you don't need to actually outline this area now that we've differentiated the S from the M by using color. That right there is a technique that allows you to suggest letter structure without actually having to draw the letter structure in there. And it's a really useful way in order to gain structure back to a letter that you might be missing it on. Try it on your piece to see how it works out, but don't be willy-nilly with this thing. You gotta use it carefully and where it makes sense. So do keep that in mind. You can kind of see he actually does that here on the M where the M comes down and then over through the O. And he's got a little strip of orange right there and he differentiates it against the purple right there a small application but still functioning i love this guy's work but dudes let me know what you guys think in the comments down below and once again let me know some more really dope graffiti art that you'd like to see me break down here on the channel as always you can find his information in the description down below be sure to go ahead and give him a follow and if you're new here subscribe to the smartest graffiti community anywhere online and check out these videos next we got the best how to do graffiti tutorials right up here with a bunch more graffiti content right down here as always thank you guys for watching i'll catch you guys next week but until then peace